felt that mistakes? Have you thought about what after that, like committee reports or other legislative history? Um, yeah, there's a lot of options after that. I mean, one thing we're doing, even as we're going towards 50, is we broaden the um, set of data we're collecting. I mentioned we, we're collecting events now, and those aren't mentioned in these slides. Um, it's kind of a newer development. Uh, most of the states that we're live in, we don't have those events. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll also go more broad. Um, right now, uh, doing three a month um, for the rest of the year is going to keep us pretty busy, but we have, a, we have some interesting clients after that. Um, we, you know, there's been talk of maybe looking at some local governments. Uh, I'll talk. We'll see. Uh, are you tracking uh, somehow um, projects which using your APIs? Do, do you have like maybe one page where like list of all projects which uh, utilize like somehow? Uh, issues is in like. No, 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 no. Uh, Like you, you said, you want us to use your APIs. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, place where all projects which using your APIs is listed? Basically, we we do not have a listing of all projects that are currently using our API. Um, that's, that's something that maybe we should consider. Um, yeah, because basically it will yeah. probably help with uh, to, to eliminate uh, the duplicity and, you know, if somebody wants to try just to do something, uh, if so, it's already done somewhere else, you know, yeah. no point. No, that's a good idea. Um, the one thing that, if you're talking about all of our APIs, um, the best place to go for that right now is it's not a direct answer to your question, but we have a Sunlight Labs Google group. Uh, if you just search for Sunlight Labs Google group, it's the first result. Uh, URL is kind of long. So what normal people, uh, when people want to start a new project, they'll go to this? Yeah, a lot of times stuff. people, and it's a good place to get publicity for your projects or just ask around, has anyone done this before? But there's not, there's not a single page okay. that, that exists on. Yeah. Thanks for the idea. I was fine. I just, along the same lines of the question before last, um, is there any work toward uh, getting some sort of data about regulatory action of the whole administrative law process? Um, we actually just started to look at that a little bit at the federal level. Um, I haven't really worked on that project, so I don't know what we're doing at the federal level exactly, but I know we're touching on it at the federal level. Um, I think it's interesting at the states. Um, it's probably a much bigger mess than we've gotten our hands into yet. Uh, we haven't looked at it yet. Yeah, let me actually address that really quickly. We're in the process of scraping all public comments from regulations.gov. If there's anything else you'd like us to grab while we're in there, please let me know. Uh, this is going to be um, a process that's likely to take a couple months worth of processor time. And uh, so we don't want to do it twice or more frequently than we have to. Um, and of course, there's a ton of stuff there that we could grab. It's not going to be comprehensive either. We understand that not everything is in the federal docket management system, but um, we're also going to be addressing agencies on kind of a triage basis after that to pull their stuff in. And of course, that corpus will be released for everybody to use once we So I um, am working on a project in Cleveland, Ohio, and it's, it's actually a county scale project. And I'm wondering whether this kind of uh, this project could be scaled down and implemented at a county level where you're scraping municipal. Uh, absolutely. Um, our pro uh, there's a few different things. We've I mean, talked about getting um, like you know laws or the equivalents at the county level. Um, this project would probably scale very nicely at that. Uh, the main thing is that right now we have a field called state that you would just need to ignore or change the county. But pretty much that's what it would take. Uh, there's, been, there's a guy in Canada that's been looking at adapting things there. Um, we think the 50 states are different enough that we've had to generalize things quite a bit. Um, so we think it's general enough to go to other levels. Um, we think it should work pretty much uh, as is at uh, the city council level and the all the way up to the federal level. Um, but where we're wrong, I'd be happy to you know, make changes and accept patches. Um, as far as scraping other things, if that's what you're talking about too, um, the, the libraries that I mentioned, like Scrapelet and things like that, those would be useful, but our, our architecture is really geared towards legislation, legislators. Um, but if, if it's within that, then yeah. yeah but just a follow-up question. As someone with no technical background, um, you know, what, what who would I need in a team that would help me pull this off, and where do you find people willing to do this for free? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, completely free is going to be hard. 
um, you're probably going to need at least one person that's on the team that can at least manage the contributions of three people. Usually when we get contributions, they require a decent amount of work to get them. I mean, they're really great. They still require a decent amount of work to get them into the status where we feel confident um, publishing that data. Um, so it's good to have at least one person um, or more on staff um, to do that. Um, as far as the skills needed, um, any uh, anyone with a program, if you're going to use our tools, then a Python developer, um, and the places to look for that are like Python job boards, tech job boards in your area, things like that. Um, but really any, um, like a Ruby developer, if you're going to just develop your own stuff from scratch, would be fine. A couple of like, you know, any, any developer with a scraping background would be fine. I would just, uh, you can use um, students a lot of times. If you go to a computer science department and throw out a project, I'm like, they would probably use that's, that's Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. If they don't think you're that, you mentioned students. Uh, that's a good place to get problems. And so I just wanted to throw, uh, the opengovernment.org is a free and open source web application. They also could provide a front end. And if anybody is uh, interested in helping contribute to that, we're an open source community project too that we were in right partnership with James. So we'll just want to get a, a plug for opengovernment.org. It's, it's a front end that you can that you can remix down for the local level as well. So pretty easy to find. And yeah, the other hope that I should mention is that one of the real advantages of us putting this out, I kind of touched on this on the first slide, um, one of the advantages of us putting our data out in common format is that any of these tools like opengovernment.org that people build, uh, we know some people are working on like mobile apps and some people work on some smaller visualizations. Any of those tools that people build, if you put data out in the same format that we're putting data out, all those tools will pretty much work. You might need a little bit of tweaking here and there, but all those tools will pretty much work at the county level or whatever. So that's one of the other hopes that we have. That by putting this data out, there'll be an ecosystem of things to know how to consume the open data format. Uh, I have a question. I have a question. Uh, scraping is quite a nasty piece of, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough and difficult. Now that you've done all these things and, and, and you, I guess, built some model of, you know, how to represent all this, all this uh, legislation and such, are you planning to try to maybe push this back and make it, uh, make, make states and make uh, senates and make, make, make them basically organize their data better so you don't have to spray it at all? And uh, absolutely. Uh, one of the first things we do is when, when we're looking at states, is we talk to them now and we ask them, do you already have bulk access? That's right. Sorry. Uh, do you already have bulk access? And, um, you know, what would it take for you to get Do you have more success with this? Um, Varying success. Uh, quite a few states have some concept of bulk access. A lot of times it's for vendors or for um, someone else that's not always complete. Um, we're also talking with, um, we got contacted by the Minnesota Historical Society of Minnesota. They're working on a project via a Library of Congress grant. Um, and there's, other, there's actually 20 other states in this coalition about adopting um, some recommendations. And so we, we built out our system for Minnesota now so they can show, okay, here's what's possible when this exists, and we're hoping that the other states in that coalition, maybe states outside of that coalition, will adopt some recommendations. We've, uh, we've in partnership with them, put out a white paper. It mostly is repackaging of the, um, the eight, now ten principles of open government data that Sunlight's put out, um, around one of those. Um, and then a couple state-specific things on having persistent IDs, and here's the formats that you should avoid, and things like that. Uh, Question. I'm a PHP developer, okay. um, and I kind of I'm probably going to do Massachusetts in the next few months. All right. Sure. Uh, I just put on the Google over. Okay. Um, wondering if you would if it would be more efficient time for me to learn Python, just do it in Python. Do you guys want the code? Like, do you have a big code base for each state that you're yeah. running? Yeah, um, we do. Um, the way that it works is that we um, if if you can. There's two things that you can do. If you know Python or if you can figure it out, uh, one of the nice things about the project is that you've got about 30 states that are, nice, that are in a decent um, condition, and you can kind of look at those and kind of twist that code. It's actually a nice way to, um, the guy I mentioned before that was that kind of taught himself Python, he had never really programmed before, as far as I know, and he, he kind of picked it up by looking at other states and figuring out, okay, well, this looks like it does this, and it's, they're actually pretty good quality. The code quality surprised me how I got this first project. Um, so we, yeah, we would prefer it in Python. We do. Um, Basically, if you're going to work on Massachusetts, what we'd ask is that you fork, um, you fork our project on GitHub, and then you create an MA directory underneath our own state tree. There's, you know, all the other state initials already there, um, and so you go in there and uh, just kind of contribute things in the same format, and then we have 
more open. Uh, there, there are states like Washington State. I, I run a nonprofit in Washington State called Knowledge is Power. We use um, Washington State's legislative web service, which puts out all of their legislative information in timely XML. So there's no question of what is available and what isn't. And um, uh, there's also an international standard on legislative data called Econontoso. It's used by the EU. It's used by several different com uh, countries. And, um, and so there's, there's an effort to have these governments putting out their data in a machine-readable format in the first place so it doesn't require scraping. Um, and we see a lot of governments kind of moving in this direction. Um, we've just gotten Seattle to commit to opening up its, its city council legislative information in a machine-readable format. So hopefully we'll see a lot of these governments moving towards um, uh, putting their legislative information out in a machine-readable format that's standardized across governments. Um, and it's, it's been great to see the, the interim work that, that open government has done to kind of get states that haven't been updated yet um, with their information out. So. Um, I understood uh, a couple questions ago, your response about, you know, uh, you're now asking the states and saying, do you provide bulk access? And uh, I think that that's a very good thing to do. But would you guys ever consider um, the answer is no, we don't provide bulk access, but you can tell that there's a back end or something. <laughs> Just say, asking not so nicely filing a FOIA request says, look, give us the bad faith stuff. Um, we, haven't, we haven't gone down the FOIA road. And there's okay. no reasons for that. Um, the, at the federal level, FOIA doesn't apply to the legislative branch. And so most states that have modeled their FOIA law off that um, have done the same thing. And the other thing is that very few states uh, in FOIA requests allow you to specify a format. Uh, the one exception I'm aware of is California, where actually um, Matt Light and one other organization in California sued them to get their SQL database opened up. So that has happened, not by us, but that's how um, that's how California SQL database got opened DC up. does it too. DC, DC, DC code allows oh, you to. Code. I don't know if it applies to the legislative branch, but I know that when you request records, you can specify a format. Okay, um, that's great. But yeah, as far as the legislative branch, um, we have not, we've not FOIA for an information. It's all available, so right. it's so uh, you, get a, you get a response that's like this information is yeah. already available. Usually, when we contact them, we'll hear back in like most states. I mean, there are about there's about ten states. Like I should have mentioned Washington earlier because Washington is one of the, one of the really good ones. Um, but there are about ten states that have something, um, and then the other ones, it's like oh, it's on our wish list. We'll we'll have it, but our website won't be updated until 2016. We've heard that line of these and so. It's on its way, what we're told, on stage, which is not what I'm right. I'm not sure who the other partner was in that lawsuit. It was not that long ago. Thank you. Oh. Okay. And two very quick things. If they don't publish it, um, what's the level at which it dies? So, for example, in Germany, I know that we have um, an XML API, but there's no political will to do it to release it. And the other question is, um, do you deal with other kind of parliamentary business besides legislation at all? So, for example, we get, I mean, um, we get laws every once in a while, but most of the stuff at this time is EU stuff that has to be implemented. And it's not quite legislation, but it's really close. Um, so, I'm going to ask you to re-ask your first part, but I'll ask the second. I'll answer the second question um, first. Uh, the second question, uh, as far as what else we grab, we grab anything that's. Uh, Kind of the loose term that I would use is legislation-ish. Um, that varies by state to state. I mean, most states you have at least resolutions. Um, some states you have like recommendations that they make to Congress. Um, some states do that. I don't think Congress ever looks at them. Do you have any questions? 
question. Um, I don't think most states have it. I haven't seen that in any states. Um, uh, in DC, they actually put all their contracts up in their legislative information systems. We actually scrape those because contracts are actually sort of voted on sort of a um, foregone conclusion, but they kind of vote on every single contract they pull. So those are all in their legislative system. So we do collect what's there. We collect what we can. Um, and did you ask the first part again? Yeah, the first question was, I mean, if both access not available, on which level does it usually die? Does it die on the kind of the political level, administrative upper level, or do they just not get the technology right? Um, uh, all three. <laughs> um, they, uh, we, we heard, there have been some, I mean, there were, was it Rhode, I wouldn't say Rhode Island, it might be New Hampshire. Um, they had um, some legislators that came in that had kind of a technical background, and they were, uh, it was New Hampshire. They came in and they were, um, they were basically like, look, this will save us money. People are scraping our site anyway. Let's do this. Um, usually, there's not a ton of opposition, but it's just, why would we spend money on that? Um, when we're updating our website, maybe we'll consider it. So that's kind of things we've heard. Or we're, well, we're already planning it, like I mentioned, but our website is not going to be today until 2016. So. Thanks. Uh, we're almost out of time, so no more questions. Uh, thank all of you for coming. Uh,